Uh, she studied art at the Cooper Union and Hunter College. And she was born in 1981. So she's relatively young compared to other artists whose work we've been looking at lately. I don't have a whole lot of biographical information about her, um, but I do know that she's exhibited extensively throughout the world and a lot in the United States of America. She was born in 1981 in Santiago. Her mother was Dominican and her father is Haitian descent. She was raised in Dajabon, a market city on the Dominican Republic border with Haiti. At the age of eight, she relocated with her family to Miami, Florida. She got her master's from Hunter and a bachelor's degree in art from Cooper Union and also studied at the Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture. She lives and works in New York City. And she's had, like I said, solo shows in Utah, in Miami. Uh, in 2016, she created a participatory installation at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So she's shown everywhere. She was part of the Venice Biennial. And she has a glass mosaic tile mural in the New York Metropolitan uh, in the MTA system at 163rd Street and Amsterdam Avenue subway station. Let's look at her work. Let me get rid of this toolbar. So her work is fanciful and again, very detailed. And she often includes these creatures which are called Siguapa. And they are mythological creatures of Dominican folklore. They're female. They usually have brown or dark blue skin with feet that are facing backwards. And they have very long, long hair, smooth, glossy hair that covers their body. And they supposedly live in the high mountains of the Dominican Republic. They're nocturnal. And you can never tell which direction that they're facing in or moving in because their feet face backwards while their face is facing you. Face, their face is facing forward. Some people believe that they are harbingers of a death, that they bring death with them. Other people believe the reverse, that they're creatures of good luck. And some people think that like mermaids, you know, the, the myth of European mermaids, that they're so incredibly beautiful that they lure men to them for bad purposes, to make them fall in love with them and then kill them afterwards. Nobody knows for sure, but even today, people believe in these Siguapa in the Dominican Republic and claim that they have seen them in the mountain regions. What do you think? I think they're pretty incredible looking. Shall we look at some more? Yeah, sure. Yes, I heard a yes. Thank you. 
So this one is very hairy, like I was reading to you in the description of the Siguapa. It's kind of beautiful. So they're part animal, part human female, part tropical plant, colorful. In Baez's work, they fill the entire picture. There's very little background in her work. Lots and lots of detail. So she draws, her process is she draws first, paints second. She uses watercolor and acrylic. The only sound that they make is a kind of whine or chirping sound. I think that's kind of intriguing. <laughs> they don't use words. Good question. Many believe that the myth is of Taino origin. The Taino people, T-A-I-N-O, are a native population of the Caribbean islands. Some people believe that it might have come from the European mermaid myth, that they are a more modern invention. And some people think it might come from the Hindu tradition of the Hindu Chirel. Am I pronouncing that correctly? But this one is a little more difficult to believe because there really is no connection between India and the Caribbean that we know of in the 19th century when the Si Guapa were first being talked about and written about. So there's really no cultural exchange between the Dominican Republic and India in the 19th century that we know of. There is a Dominican film called El Mito de la Ciguapa, The Myth of the Ciguapa. It was released in 2009. And there's also a children's book created by Julia Alvarez called The Secret of the Footprints in 2002 that features the Ciguapas. That might have more information in it to help you answer that question. Let's see. I don't even know how they sound. This is all part of the wonderful myth. Maybe you have to go to the Dominican Republic to find out. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think of them artistically and visually? Do you have a reaction? No thoughts on that. Now this one is maybe easier to relate to because she's more recognizably human, correct? The hair is wild. The hair is wild, for sure. Incredibly sculptural, right? This one I actually like less than the other two, but that's me. It's interesting composition, this long green, dark green rectangle on the left helps to balance all that heavy dark hair, the shapes of the heavy dark hair. Look at the crazy intense detail in her dress. She does, as the myth and legend says, she, she does have an extraordinarily beautiful face. Okay, let's look at some more really quickly. I'm not getting a reaction today. Usually there's a lot of discussion. The story, the story seems unreal. Well, it is, it's, whoops. 
it is unreal. It's it's magical. It's it's the artist completely using her imagination. Everybody at home can see these, right? I forgot to ask. Why? Me too. Yes. I agree. You have to really, really look harder at these. I love the colors in this one, the textural details. So today, our assignment will be to paint. And create our own mythological, imaginative creature, part female, part animal. Oh, this one, this one's incredible. Part animal, if you like, part plant. Yes. Look at her tattoos, wow. Very seductive, this person. This, this Siguapa is very seductive, just like the myth says. Her feet are facing front though, not backwards. Good morning, Simon, not a problem. Don't worry, life gets in the way. Let's try this one next. Oh, this one's really cool. So what I would recommend is that you start with a light pencil sketch of an oval for a head, maybe put neck and shoulders for your composition, and then start adding plant and animal shapes for crazy hair. Think about wild texture for the clothing that she's wearing. I would not do a full figure. Just think about the head, the hair, and the upper body of your creature. Do we like this one? No, yes. Too much vegetation. Okay, <laughs> too much vegetation. And yes, we like the vegetation. Anybody at home have a thought? Dina likes this one. I like the colors. You like the colors. A lot of cultures have the idea that mermaids exist. I mean, around the world. So I, I think it's kind of cute. I, I think sailors had to come up with a way of explaining disappearances or, you know, strange phenomena. Okay. I know, but I like the art. I like the art. Awesome. And I like that everyone has a different opinion. That makes me happy. Okay, we'll look at one more. To inspire you for ideas. I thought I had one that was more animal oriented. But I don't think I do. Let's try this one.
suddenly a little bit of brain fog there. Um, so this one, the face is really strange on this one. Looks like what? A dog. Okay. The headdress looks like a turkey, but it's all lace. All right. So this is an opportunity to really have fun. I don't want you to make anything realistic. This is coming from your imagination. All right. And Laura, I want to do a demo for folks to see how they can create interesting textures with the acrylic paint. It might help them with this particular project because there's a lot of texture going on with this project. Those of you who are, at heat, who are here, you can start gathering up materials. You can do mixed media using drawing equipment as well as paints. There are acrylics that you can either pour out or use from the jars. There are brushes back there and all the drawing equipment that you could use. Folks at home, you have the opportunity to use collage. You, I think in the email I said collect bits and pieces of paper from around your house to use so you can be gluing uh, interesting images as well as painting in this work today. All right, any questions about what we're doing? Go get your stuff. And in a moment, we'll be doing the demo of how to make texture with acrylic paint. It's a low energy day, isn't it? I think because it's dark now when we wake up, it's really hard to get physically motivated. Oh, uh, for point, well, if you want to pour paint out, you could take the jars of paint behind you. Eileen, you see them? on the window ledge and you can pour more paint into the jars. They're the same colors that you can get from the bottles. I'm coming to show you. If you want to do mixing, you can do it on the paper towels. So all the colors that you need are also in the jar. So our goal today is to have fun, fun, fun. Not a deep intellectual activity yet. Oh, good. And Laura has paper plates and I'll take one if you want to do mixing. Shirley, I did. That was a joke, Shirley. I hope you realize. Oh, and Laura, you brought me water. Did I say thank you? Thank you. 
Laura is singing for us folks at home. We're lucky today. Do it from the large bottles. Don't the little jars are for you to bring to your seat. Oh, okay. yeah. If you want a quart of paint, do it from the large bottles. These little jars you can bring right to your seat. They're kind of personal. Okay. All right. So Laura's gonna uh, set up the camera for us. Oh duh. Uh, I'm not quite ready. I just don't have to put the paint and Oh, yeah. That's what I Shake if you're using the bottles, shake it really good because the solid separates from the liquid. Shake, shake, shake. You can get a little bit of cardio in it. And those of you who are here, this is just a part of it. You can still do a lot. Let me just get the blue sticks. So, folks that are here, you want to watch this too. Always options. You can create your own paper. And I'll show you in a minute. All right. So my recommendation for this project of creating this Sequapa or crazy part woman picture plan is to start just with the head, the neck, and shoulders, and the knee. 
I only brought over two colors. And then I'll come in one and black this. Either. Thank you. Okay. So, oh. so always you paint one intense bright color, you use more paint. That's water. Run it to be thin and duller in intensity, you can use less paint and more water. Brighter, darker, more paint, less water. Duller, more transparent, more water, less. If you want it to be browner, that agree. It's the neutral you mix the primary with its complement red plus green will neutralize red and make it browner. Textural effects. And with a dry brush, all kinds of interesting textural things. You can take the end of a brush and scratch into shape. To do textural things, you have to have some dark color over a bright color in order to see those scratch marks. But it's pretty cool. You can also paint with crumbled up paper. A really cool texture. Or flowers or fur. But it's fun. I want you to try and go out of your comfort zone. It's <laughs> yeah. a lot of fun. Try new things. Try and let go of creating a finished piece of art. Play. And if necessary, have two pieces of paper side by side. One piece of paper can be your experiment piece of paper, your play piece of paper. The other can be the more finished piece of art. And look at this, you can collage a more textural effect. I like to get the paint on the blue stick, but I won't cry if that happens. You can always buy more sticks if they're blue. So you do have the option of collaging today, too, if you want. You can take dry paper towel and collage it. Paint it, see how it looks. I like to get back to painting. Oh, I'm just playing. 
not thinking at all now. Okay. This is not a work of art. I'm just showing people what options you have. I'm going wild and crazy. Play. I want people to play today. Try and play, Lisa. Okay? No, not really. But do, I recommend you start with that pencil sketch first to work out your composition. Can you leave it? I'm leaving it off for you, sure. I'm so no, those are not for pouring out. You bring the whole jar to your seat and use it from the jar. Okay, you don't have to pour it. This is at Steve. I'm returning. Okay, who gave me the green? Uh, I guess I'll use them. Uh, there should be another read. Or how do we make green, children? Which two colors make green? Come on. Blue and what else? Yellow. Yellow. How do you hear my eight plus right there? It's so beautiful. All right, any other questions? What to go? Not yet. Take a minute to think. You have a lot of pain here, my friends. So you have a lot to play with. Use up all that pain. Everybody at home, good? Some things in the chats. Oh, I don't know what Sirens HDO and Tidelands are, presenting different visions of mermaids. What are they, Dina? There are three shows that are on TV right now. Tidelands is on Netflix, and I'm not sure where the other two are. But oh, uh, there's been a series called H2O out of Australia. Thank you for that information. Very cool. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, I hope there are mermaids on the Great Barrier Reef. Oops, what did I do? There are mermaids on the Hudson River? Yeah. That's nice. And mermen. So today, you don't have to worry about proportions or what goes where, or just play. Try and let go of the idea that you have to make the perfect finished piece of artwork. Connect with your siguapa, your inner siguapa. I love that word. I can't stop saying siguapa. Yes, she's having a wonderful time. How is that spelled? Siguapa is spelled. Oh, I'm going to put it in the chat. I intended to do that earlier. Thank you, Margo, for asking. Siguapa is C-I-G-U-A-P-A. -A. And I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Siguapa. Wait, it's not showing that it's, I sent it. Did everybody see it? Yes. Okay, good. Good, good. See guapa.
I like the power of the Siguapa. See if you can convey that kind of power. Or maybe you think she's just a fun character. Typical beginnings and the images I'm seeing already here. Maybe you'll have time to do more than one Siguapa. <laughs> Maybe the first one you make will be your test siguapa, and you'll have time to do a second. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Especially after last week, it was very controlled, right? Trying to build. Oh. Now we're doing a complete opposite <laughs> of that. Yeah, so this is awful when it separates, but it's, you can stir it and it should, the liquid and the solid should come together if you stir it. Oh, it's not too. Or you can use the image of the flowers and the head of the cigar. It's a nerve and stand up. What? It's not going to work. What would work is if you put it in that picture. Go we'll get your paper, woman. Go we'll get your paper. <laughs> It's too heavy and it's not tall and she needs something tall. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I'm laying it down flat on the table. I mean, okay. I want you to have some time to be my call. Now, she said 
smaller cup. Well, it's got to work. It's so cold in here. Yeah, they'll be fine. I think you're going to have time to do more than one. Which is cool. You can let the first one dry. Second. When the first one is dry, you can go back and do details. You can create some papers, collage, attaching collage. See, like, you can start cutting the good stuff. It's not too wet. I'm joining it. Any of my folks at home doing collage, or are you just painting? I'm curious. All working off camera today. That's cool. I would let it dry, start a second, come back and work on it soon. Oh. 
Yeah, don't forget some of the Tiguapa are blue. Blue or brown skin covered in hair. Furry, they're furry creatures. Blue and orange are complementary colors. You don't have to use yellow. I don't know why I started with yellow. Yeah. I don't know why I started with yellow, but you, if you want to use yellow, it's just completely arbitrary. About the vacuum screen. Y'all are all about the bad of the bad. What's happening behind your head? Color. Do not leave it white. Do not leave it white. All that white is death. So mm -hmm. She swallows up. Face and her face is so great. It's color blind. Color you use is it's going to be a difficult choice because you use so many colors in your. I don't know what to suggest. Violet is complement of yellow. Green is the complement of red. Your purple is the complement of the yellow. Purple is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Can we make a special effort today, guys, to really clean the brushes well? So I'm seeing a lot of these brushes are very stiff. They should not be this stiff. So at cleanup time, if you could please make an extra effort. Take this. Mix the whole of some white so that you turn the brush. And you might find a little spray texture in it. You can make this part a little smoother. You can 
it in the face or shoot it in the face? Shoot it in the Okay. Anyone at home need me to look at their work or are you happy or not happy and you don't want me to look at the work? Always happy, still drawing. <laughs> okay, good. I worked on a Halloween drawing. <laughs> you want to see it? Hey, we are in that season, aren't we? I didn't even think about that. Sure, if you want to share. All right. Stop. Smearing. Uh, Margo, sometimes your voice sounds exactly like Dina's. So interesting. Terrific. Wow. It looks like Tim Burton. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Done. You know what? I would love to see the background in some kind of color. It's a lot of color in it. It's just, it's, you know, if I use the charcoal to get the dark, the darks, and uh, okay, clearing, so I go back. <laughs> okay. She is a siren. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's an icebox in here today. Oh, no. Alice, yeah. you want to share? Okay, I'm gonna spotlight you. Oh, she's so pretty. Who is this pretty it's person? It's my daughter. daughter. Yeah. Wow. She's a mermaid like, but I haven't. I don't have the right colors. So, um, you have no colored pencils. Mm. I'll have to look. That's an idea. Yeah, I yeah. think colored pencils would work beautifully. This yeah. is a great drawing. Um, you might want to enlarge the, what is the colored portion of the eye called? Iris. Yeah, the iris a little bit. Thank you. Enlarge the iris. Okay. Just a little. The whites of the eye look a little too big to me. Small. It's a small thing. Look at the picture of her. Make sure I'm right. Okay. I could be wrong. Otherwise, I think this is just terrific. Okay. Look at the picture. Make sure I'm right. I'll do that. How do I get back to me? Maybe I go to the library. No. Anyone else want to share? Susan? Courtney? Courtney, would you like to share? Oh, here's how I get I can. It's uh, it, it went very sort of literal on the animal thing, and I wanna play spot. Oh, I love it! Love, love, love it! Some background, something behind her wonderful head to define it, so we can see it better. Mm -hmm. It's terrific. Are you enjoying? Yeah. Okay. Good. Dina, are you in the mood to share? Not just yet, but I'm getting there. I'm just applying paint. Oh, okay. Um, Liz, can you show one of the early slides of the woman's work where the, uh, you know, in is blue and all that stuff? Yeah, I, I don't think I can at the moment unless... At the end, maybe? Oh, I can with the camera on. I think the camera's still on, isn't it? Oh, okay, good. Okay, so yes, I will do that right now. I wasn't able to take pictures earlier. Not a problem. I just wanted, to you wanted one of the last ones that I put up, or do you want a whole new one? Uh, one of the earlier ones where, you know, she's going crazy, creative. 
one of the earlier ones. Yeah, I got pictures of the last ones, but they were more tame. How about this blue one, which is one of my favorites? Whoop, get up. Um, this might help the people here too. So this is a good idea. Thank you, Marco. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm putting a picture up on the screen, folks, to hear. If you're starting a new image, you might want to look at Ms. Baez's work one more time for inspiration. This is definitely a water creature, this Guapa. Guapa, yeah. She looks like she's literally made from water. And the artist is breaking one of my rules. She did nothing with the background, but the, the image is so strong. You can't take your eyes off of her, can you? No. I would not want to run into her on the seashore. Or <laughs> I would not want to be walking down the beach and run into her. I have to say. She's not a friendly, warm, fuzzy kind of a creature. No, she isn't. It's one of the Siguapa. Yep. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Laura states that the only way to capture a ciguapa is by tracking them at night during a full moon with a black and white polydactylic, I have no idea what that means, poly, polydactylic dog called a sanquenio dog. Polydactyly is extra digits. All right, Susan, thank you. A polydactylic dog called the Cinqueno dog. Susan is our medical terminology genius. This, the, the textural effects she achieved in this are mainly through dripping. She must have made the paint so wet. Turns her canvas lots of different directions to make the paint run. Yeah, I want to see more of this now. The lighter color within the dark. You know what I'm saying? So get some more of that white and you also do the the textural effect of the white within the dark. The dark is a little too heavy. Green. Wow. 
Lovely. I will take it's finer and it's drier. I will take it. salt outline. Fine. Well done. Right here for your science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, see, you guys thought I was crazy in the beginning, but these are coming out great. Say maybe out on here and Yes, love it. Blue lady. Stand back, look at it from a distance. Folks at home, you cool? You're so lucky. You're not as cold as we are. <laughs> yes, I can't paint when I'm cold. <laughs> Me either. Laura had to come out of the library this morning and drag me out of the sun to come into the library. <laughs> I'm 
was like, Laura, come on, let me soak up the heat. <laughs> you keep a sweater there. <clears throat> I am wearing two. I'm wearing my denim jacket and a sweater. And maybe a hat or gloves. <laughs> I, should, I should, in the winter, I'll wear my um, knit hat. We need to, Teresa to come back. Remember Teresa? I miss her. She used to knit all those great hats. Do you want me to keep this picture up or would you like to see another? I fear a leg. Another one? Folks here, you want me to keep this one up or a new picture? Oh no, Lisa's Lisa's drawing this one. I'm gonna keep this one up. Never mind. This is the best. This one you like the best. Thank <laughs> you. 
forgotten that she had that solo show in New York before she had the show in Paris. I didn't know all the tracks and stuff. And the, the show in Paris was such a disappointment to her. It was awful. Her friend, Andre Breton, completely stabbed her in the back with that stupid Paris show. It was supposed to be a solo show, but he put her work with children's toys, artifacts that he bought in Mexico that he liked. 17 Wife just went to see Ollie's house. And then Daniel is going to come back and see if he's going to talk to us about the Zwabo by SMEs. Dina, I saw your drawing on Facebook. Oh. 
Hang on. Oh, close. I'm glad. Did you like it? I do like it. I'm a big fan of Tim Burton and Edward Gorey. Yes, me too. <laughs> they did. There's a funny little piece on WMYC this morning about Tim Burton. Really? Whether or not Nightmare Before Christmas is a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie. It was a, a cute, cute little piece. Yeah, me too. Well, I always show it for both holidays. <laughs> yes. Well, the, because it's, it's a Tim the Burton movie. movie. Yeah. The NPR piece ended with a short clip of a little eight-year-old boy who said, I watch it all year long. <laughs> It's Isn't not it real? Christmas nor <laughs> Halloween. It's just a great movie. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. He's a brilliant artist, Tim Burton. Were you able to catch his show at the, his retrospective? At, where was it? The Whitney or MoMA? That was a great. No, not, not this time. It was, it was how many years ago? It's quite a while ago. Um, Pre-COVID? <laughs> oh, way before COVID, yeah. It's at least 10 years ago that Tim Burton. So. There's um, the new show at the Whitney is an African-American artist, Henry Taylor. Uh, I recommend it highly. I haven't, excuse me, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to going. I hope to get to see it soon. He's a portrait artist. There's also at the Frick, the first African-American artist ever shown at the Frick. I'm forgetting his name, but he's a portrait painter and um, hyper-realistic portraits. They're quite wonderful. Let me look it up. Those of you who like that kind of work, you're gonna wanna go. Barkley L. Hendricks is his name. The show is called Portraits of the Pr Frick from September 21st to January 7th. Can I get to the chat? While the picture's up, no. Uh, once the picture comes down, I will put it in the chat. Barkley L. Hendricks uses a lot of gold leaf.
That's one of ours. Everyone at home, okay, we're going to share soon, and we're going to share people at home first, and people here, we're not going to clean up until people at home share, okay? I don't want anyone to move. We're going to look at the TV screen.
Valley Mass. It's well done. Well then, one suggestion I would do is the black line. Yeah. What time is this? This will really pull out the beauty of the page. It will make the viewer really focus in the dark. Just a dark outline. Got it going on here. Um, right, folks at home, I, I want to start sharing with you. Folks who are here, can you take a seat? I know. Uh, bye, Esty. You have to leave early. Bye. We're going to start sharing with the folks at home. I just want to quickly put in the chat the name of that artist at the Frick is Barkley Hendrix. And he is at the Frick Museum. And Henry Taylor at the Whitney. Two very interesting artists. All right, so folks here, if we could give the people at home our attention. And Alice, you are first. In the queue, would you like to share? Okay. The um, photograph is the inspiration. And it's somewhat changed from the photograph just because that's the way I think of her, I guess. Really well done. But it did help to have the color on it. Yes, you were right, I think. And Well, and I suggested color pencil because the colors in colored pencil are the closest to nature mm -hmm. we have of any media available to us. So yeah. very nice, very nice. You should feel good about it. Well done. Okay, so now I have to figure out how I get back. Participants. Um, I think Margo is next in my queue. Oh, good. Margo, you're next. Thank you, Alice. And Margo's next. Oh, wow. Fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> yes, very Tim Burton ish. And it's Love changed it. from before. You outlined her with darker. Yes, I did. Outline. Okay, very cool. Beautiful. And some paper there. <laughs> it's very elegant. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you for sharing, Margo. And if you could put up the picture of everybody. <laughs> I think Susan is next. Okay. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, you did great. Yeah. <laughs> you did great collage, right? Yeah, it's collage. Love, love, love the hair. Lo collage and watercolor and some magazine. Very yeah. cool. 
It's bizarre. Cool. I, I have one suggestion. Mm -hmm. Not bizarre. It's awesome. I would get a little bit darker, maybe behind the hair. Just mm -hmm. a little, not a lot and not to the edge of the paper, but mm -hmm. a little bit darker in some areas behind the hair. Okay. Just the way you did in the bottom around the arms and the head. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be fur. <laughs> yeah, I got that. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> great, great use of collage. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Next. I can go next. I'm trying to find people, Dina, here. Okay. Here's Dina. Awesome. So Dina, show us your work. Okay, I'm not done. That's cool. Wow. Wow. That's wonderful. Wow. Thank you. That's awesome. Atta goddess, a Syrian goddess from about 100 AD. Wow. Fabulous. Thank you. I'm saying this with much love and deep respect. She looks a little like you. Oh, mm -hmm. in my dreams. <laughs> but thank you. Acrylic or watercolor? Uh, watercolor, acrylic, colored pencil, and marker. Wow. She is very beautiful and definitely a water creature. Yes. All right. Have I missed anybody at home? I thought you were there. I heard Stephanie, but I'm not seeing Stephanie. She tried to join and couldn't on her phone. Courtney, did you get a, a turn to share, Courtney? Um, so this was my second one. I don't know if it's visible. No, it's not visible. You can't really see it on this. So. It's oh, you can see it. Wait, let me. Vaguely. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. It's not oh, very yeah. visible. So. It's very looking good. good. Can you send me a JPEG? Sure. I love the shape of that head, Courtney. Thanks. Keep working on it. I love, love, love the shape and the colors look interesting too. All right, so Laura, can we do the camera for folks who are here? Thank you all of you at home for sharing. Now it's time for folks here. And then we will have to clean up. So folks at home, just give us a second. And while you're waiting for Laura, just a reminder that tonight is the Manhattan Short Film Festival right here at Hoboken Public Library, starting at 5 p.m. And tomorrow evening, is the just domestic violence uh, panel discussion with these really incredible panelists. Lorianne Castell is the director of prevention at New York State Coalition Against Violence. Melissa Dittmore is a consultant specializing in issues of gender. And Francesca Nicotra is a New Jersey, New York attorney with 30 years of experience. All right, look at this magnificent painting. Beautiful textural work and it's blue, just like a real, real Zigabwa. Well done. And here's another blue Siguapua with flowers. <laughs> Great textural effects. Awesome. Bravo, guys. 
And two. Oh, beautiful. Just beautiful. Awesome images. Beautiful. Great hair effects on the first one you made. Great job, Sherry. Sure. <laughs> Terrific, beautiful. Wow. Really great, ladies. Really great. I think Fira Le Baez was a great inspiration for all of us today. Yes. Super. Beautiful color, beautiful texture, great lines and shapes. Where did Lisa go? Did Lisa run out? She did. <laughs> Sally, we're looking at your picture, Sally. Hi. All right, this is beautiful blue. Beautiful. Blue, blue, blue. Look at the great shapes and textures she's created. Great out use of outlining. Well done. And our final image. Wow. Mm. A lot of feeling in this one, right? A lot of emotive quality and great texture. I like the whipping yeah. around beautifully and the flowers. Oh. Great. Gorgeous. You did that? Great, great. The rest of the did it, great. The rest of the name. This is how she can brush there. Liz, people ask I have forgotten your name. Can you hear? Nicola, right. Gorgeous. Nicola is a student who has returned to our class. She used to be here all the time. Sorry, Nicola, for forgetting your name. Welcome back. Beautiful. All right, we all did great today. Bravo. Woohoo! <laughs> Folks who are here, it is time to clean up. Next week, we will continue our celebration of Latino American History Month with another Latin American artist. And I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Liz. Bye. Well done. See you soon. Bye-bye. Oh. Don't forget, open studio tour at MANA Contemporary next week. I will be there. Hope to see you. This, this is coming Sunday, right? This coming Sunday, October 12th, Studio B 101. Thank you for coming, everyone. <laughs>